I have a question here that um, Roger asked yesterday, and I said, "Oh, l- let's let's not answer that now. Let's let me answer that tomorrow." And here's the question that he brought up. Um, I guess he was listening listening to me talk about going to. Whoops, hang on a second. There we go. About going to Area Fifty One. Um, and out of body and what I encountered there and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so he said, how do you get from where you are to area 51 or anywhere else and beyond? And, and so that's a sophisticated question. Um, and it's really, hang on a second. It's, um, what you need to understand about consciousness and out of body experience is that you don't go anywhere. You don't normally take your body anywhere because we aren't developed enough to haul that heavy, I was going to say that heavy ass, um, that heavy body uh, anywhere. But what you do, and I learned this from Daiwan, what you start out doing is you place your focus of attention wherever you want it to be. And he had a name for that. And I forget what it's called. Uh, Something like your focal point or your uh, something like that. And he would, um, he would say, what you need to do is practice putting that somewhere else and allowing yourself to experience what's there without the interference of all of your experience from your everyday getting in the way. And at first I thought, well, that's cheating. That's not really out of body. And and the answer was, oh, yes, it is. Um, And it's sometimes, and this is where it got me thinking, it sometimes leads to being permanently out of body. And, and I was like, okay, so what would an example of that be? And he said, let's say that you're driving down the road and you're in your car and you're not present to what's happening around you. You're daydreaming about something else. And that daydream becomes so real that your entire focus of consciousness is on that thing and boom, along comes the truck. Uh, T-bones, T-bones you, and the result is you're dead. Now you're permanently out of the body. You may never even know that you got hit by a truck because your focus is still in that other reality system that you were in. We call it daydreaming. It's really a little dream. It's a waking dream. And, and you may continue on there. Another example was, um, this was a little more frightening, Um, when you go on an excursion like I did to Area 51, thinking, well, what is this about? I never heard of this place. This was a while ago. Um, and, And I, you know, I end up in this elevator with a bunch of people going down, 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 down into the earth. And um, and realizing uh, this appears this appears to be real. So what started out as I'm just going to begin putting my attention. I'm going to give myself directions to focus on this place called Area 51. I had no idea what it was. So um, so you end up kind of starting the process. And then it very quickly became all encompassing. And I was there. And so we went down in the elevator and then I get off the elevator and I'm, it's, you can tell you're way underground, way underground. And I'm wandering down various hallways, looking in different rooms. And I see this room with a meeting going on and some really strange looking beings in that room. And I thought, well, I'll just go in here and be a fly on the wall and and listen. And as soon, the instant that I entered that room, those uh, ETs were like, somebody's here, someone has invaded. And they knew I was there. They could tell that there was a new frequency. 
in the room. And, and so my thought, which was, I'm just going to be a fly on the wall. Somebody said, um, get a fly swatter. Well, as soon as I heard that, that was when I was like, okay, I'm out of here. Um, and I beelined it I, in a panic back to, you know, the farm here and, and they followed, one of them followed me. And so that was very frightening. Um, and there were, you know, some promises I made and I promise I won't, I, I was just exploring. I, I didn't, I never didn't know about you guys. Um, I'm sorry. And I won't do it again, I promise. And so, you know, they left. But that became an instance in which I understood what Don Juan had said when he said, sometimes you can get trapped in another system and you end up dying there. When that happens, if you aren't quick enough to come back, wake up, enter your body, then you will suffer a tremendous amount of harm. You may not be able to have the umpa to come back to your consciousness here. Um, all kinds of things may occur. And, and there were other things. Your consciousness can be captured and then the body can be controlled. And I mean, there's a lot of, of issues that can go wrong, we'll say. But that is, it is simply when you start out at our level of development, putting your attention elsewhere. Bob Monroe and I used to have conversations about getting out of the body. I would just, I was actually at that point trying to stay in the body. Um, he was developing techniques for getting out and he had a specific technique. Um, he would lay on the sofa, he would get into this kind of half asleep state. And then he would begin rolling in his mind. He was rolling off the couch and standing up. And when he couldn't feel the floor or under him, he would roll again. He would roll until he got off the couch and was out of the body and uh, free at that point. That was the ritual that he used to, be to free his consciousness from the conditions and the limitations and the habits of perception that you have as a result of being in the body you're in. Once he was out, he could go anywhere. And that and his body stayed on the couch. Okay, so what you're doing in an out of body experience is learning to target whatever you want to target. And you begin kind of uh, roughly at first, having uh, an impression while well, I was in a place where uh, it was, you know, I was in a house or I was in the woods or I was in a vehicle or I was in the mountains or, or, or wherever. You'll have a general impression like mine. Ooh, we're going down into the earth. I thought that was ridiculous. Um, later, I discovered that, that, was, that there was a whole city down there. Um, and I can go there without getting myself in trouble now. Because I don't put the whole person there. I don't put the whole frequency or the whole consciousness there. I just allow pictures to come. It's a safe way of getting information. Okay? So, um, so that is how you move your attention. You develop a little ritual. A friend of mine, actually, this was one of the students who was um, learning to manage her psychic abilities um, when we were both students at Macomb County Community College. And she developed this technique in which she would peel an orange and just keep on peeling and peeling and peeling. And I think she said she practiced that for two or three months and then voila. By the time the orange was peeled, she was out of the body. Her consciousness was free from all of its usual constraints. A couple other gals in the class did other things, um, more or less successful. Like I said, for me, I was trying to stay in the body and stabilize. And so it was a matter of, 
you know, I don't need any techniques. I need a way of anchoring myself. And, and that eventually came as I learned how to manage perception. So, um, so just be aware that all the way from the ancient Toltecs um, through many of the shamans, um, that, that ability to put your consciousness where you want it to be, and then to pick up full spectrum impressions to the degree that you end up actually being there, you invest the whole self there. That is what it's about. So it's a practice. You start, you get better and better and better. Okay. It's like anything else. It's kind of like a muscle that you have to use. Does that make sense? And does that answer your question, Roger? Uh, most of my question, uh, is this the same technique you use to, uh, to go visit people that have uh, passed on? Um, well, yeah, pretty much. Although, uh, for me, it's different. Um, so I'll say I, you can do it that way. Yes, you start out, you've, you do some, you establish a small ritual. The way Bob did it was really very good. Um, and the woman who was in my class was named Phyllis, and she was the one who peeled the orange. Um, and so it, it really, I mean, if you develop a small technique and you just do that every time and you say to yourself, by the time I get done with this, whatever it is, um, rolling off the sofa, I will be out of the body. Or by the time I get done peeling this orange, I will be, I will have freed my consciousness. I will have peeled off the body and the consciousness is free. So you start establishing that ritual and you give it the meaning and the goal you want. And then um, you focus on uh, as if you're moving through space, going to the way station. Most people um, that have been on the earth recently are at the way station. Um, and, and then the way station always appears like this huge, huge city. It's got a wall around it. Um, and there's a couple of gatekeepers. And the one gatekeeper I see over and over is a guy named Jeff. I have no idea about him. I've never asked anything about him, where he comes from, why he's doing that. He's been in that spot for probably 40 years. So, um, so I just say, can we come in? He says, yes, opens the gate. Um, and, and we go in, or I go in. Um, my first time there was incredibly disappointing because it just looked like more streets, more houses, more people moving around. They were taking care of their yard. They were doing all sorts of ordinary stuff. And I was like, where's the heaven? This is just more of the same crap. But after I had been there a number of times, I began to see and feel and hear way differently. It's like, oh, this is another reality system. And it's a system in which the emphasis on personal growth and spirituality, the spirit of yourself, is, is very, very powerful. And then after a while, I began to understand the, the what would I call it, the underlying structure of that entire society. And that underlying structure is this is a place where people come that are planning to go back to planet Earth. This is uh, most of them. Some people go a few other places, but most are coming back here. And so they live and they work and they contribute and they interact um, typically for a few years, at least six, seven, eight, nine years. And then they go away to school. And the first school, the elementary school, there is a school in which you review your life you just had. And you are reviewing it because you want to <laughs> see, okay, what could I have done differently? And what can I learn from observing myself? And it's pretty, uh, it's pretty shocking. 
It's pretty emotional. Every single thought, word, and action that you did here on Earth is recorded in the soup, the ethers. And they have technology there that plays that on a screen. It's a very advanced reality system in terms of spirituality. And so you watch yourself on screen, you cry a lot, you know, you harangue yourself, <laughs> you, um, you, you excuse yourself, you say, well, I didn't know. And, um, you know, those kinds of things. And you, you make notes, you keep notes of, wow, you know, I really did that well. And I did this very well. And I sucked at that. And, and so on. And then um, at the same time you're going to school, you're also working with a group of like-minded souls, um, and you're discussing what you've learned about yourself and how you could have done it differently, and and you see how close you got to a breakthrough, etc. And so that's elementary school. And then when you come to um, what I'll say, high school, you, that, that's the second level of learning, and that's where you you go into school. Um, and the, it takes a couple of years to get through elementary stuff. Um, and then you have a break. And then you go back and you study the future, not the past. And you look at where could I go? And who do I want to hook up with? I'm not talking sex here. <laughs> who do I want to work with? and live with and be born to and interact with in such a way that I can polish, take another step, grow further, expand greatly. Um, and you're taking into account all your shortcomings and all of your strengths. And you're also still working with your group um, that is doing the same thing. You're giving them feedback. You're looking at the future scenarios and you look through a lot, it takes a couple more years of our time to go through those possible futures. And the first thing you do is say, well, do I want to insert myself into a war? Do I want to insert myself into a time of peace? Do I want to live um, in the, at the top of the planet or at the bottom or in the middle or wherever? Um, what culture do I want to be in? Because every culture has a different worldview and you're trying to expand yourself. And so then you get all kinds of feedback. And then once you target, I'm going to say four or five places, maybe six, maybe only three that you think, oh, that's I, I want to go there. I want to learn that. Then the people you have been working with and there's usually a couple of what we might call uh, therapists or guides. Guides is probably a better term. Um, they, they, everybody's interacting and they're pointing out all the possibilities of things that can go wrong and all of the things that could go right and what the benefits might be. And so that finding that is, you know, part two um, or high school. And then um, the next phase is finding people that you can work with. You may have family still on earth and you want to come back to that family, in which case you now have to wait for them to leave the planet, leave their current life, come to the way station, get themselves oriented, go through elementary school and then be looking for somebody that they can work with to further their own development. And so by this time, 30 or 40 years has gone by. And that is um, the wise way to set up another life, to be patient, to wait to work with people that you know and love, and, and that you can change roles with. <laughs> and that really, uh, then once you get the plan in place, you may change the location and the timing and the culture. And when you get it all set up, then you go back to living until that time appears. And when that occurs, then your consciousness, just the imprint of your consciousness is imprinted in that baby. 
that's being born, that's going to become you. Not all your memories, just the your base frequencies. And um, people know that they're going to be inserted in a fetus. And that's how it works. And, and so they come back and they don't know that they've been here before. You forget everything. Your mind has been wiped in a sense. And you start out and you hope to God, you cross your fingers that the people who you chose to work with and who said, okay, um, let me give an example. We're going to get married. I'm going to cheat on you and you are going to work your way through jealousy to a place of understanding what went wrong in the dynamics between us. And how did you uh, treat me after that discovery that I was cheating on you? And so that's one example. Um, you know, there's other examples. The, um, you know, there, there's a million examples, but that's a very common one and one that's easy to understand. And you hope that they will teach you that they will do what they agreed to do. Cause sometimes you get down here and it changes you and you chicken out and, and you cop out. Sometimes people will, instead of cheating, they'll suffer silently and then suddenly die early. And now you're, you're out, you've done all this work, all this planning, all this um, set up in order to work past this one issue and now there's nothing that doesn't happen. And so when that occurs, um, the core change that you were after, if you're awake enough, you can go after it in a different way. If you're not awake, you'll just sort of drift through to the end of life. And then you go back to the way station and then you look at what you just did and go, ah, I wasted 70, 80 years. Um, when the plan changes, you have to change yourself and your own plan. When somebody poops out on you, um, you have to go after that lesson in some other way. So very often, people marry again, <laughs> and then maybe a third time. You know, one of the accountants I had um, had been married nine times. I was like, wow. Meredith, maybe you should think about it before you, you know, hop in up to the altar the next time. So that's kind of a, a pretty good idea of what we're doing, um, why we're here, how things work. It's, uh, it's limited because there's a lot of really, really good stuff that happens as well. Um, you can place yourself in a culture where the little bitty tribe in the the hills or the islands of some, I don't know, you know, somewhere in some islands, the Trobrian Islands, for instance, and they focus on dreams. And so every morning your parents ask you, did you dream? What did you dream? And, and you share at breakfast among the family what you dreamed and everybody then gets involved in analyzing that. Everybody learns um, you teach, they learn, they share their dreams, you learn, you teach. Um, and the result is you end up with an opportunity to become a very powerful uh, dream walker or spirit walker, sometimes it's called. And, um, and then you, you take that with you as a gift. And then later you have some other life 300 years later. And you're like, whoa, I do this. Real, this why is this so easy for me? Um, or you're in, you choose to come to the northern areas um, where the Inuit are incredibly telepathic and there's no distractions except snow and more snow. And there's nothing to focus on and life is very simple. It's about survival and, and telepathic communication, knowing who's in trouble out there on the ice or on the snow or on the water. And you take that with you. So uh, there are tribes in South America who specialized in transporting themselves, um, moving physically, dissolving themselves in one place and moving to another. 
most of those tribes are gone now, but that is one of their skills. Um, they were still around up until uh, maybe the 1960s. Uh, I think maybe the last few of them are no longer here. So, um, you know, we put ourselves where we can learn something extraordinary. And then we, we have that tool in our tool bag. So, and, and then, you know, then we have classes like this where I say, get out your tools <laughs> and you, and you just do. And then you go, oh my God, that worked. Yeah, it worked because that is how consciousness worked or works. And because you have done some of those things in other lifetimes. So, um, okay, let's answer some questions. <laughs> um, so Deanna, go ahead. Okay, first of all, that's so fascinating, everything you just un talked about. I just, oh, was yeah. A um, couple of things. One, as far as establishing a ritual to go out of body, is that yeah. something like, would he physically, physically take this body and roll it around on the couch in circles, or would she physically pill? No, he would just mind? imagine that he was rolling off the couch. Okay. Okay. And so he got so practiced at it that he'd imagine his, his soul rolled out of his body. Yeah. Yeah. Your okay. soul is your consciousness, your, your frequency set. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, okay. When you talk about the way station and the amount, like the years, are they Gregorian years? It's like what we experience no. here. Right. Not even close. Okay. <laughs> Somebody always asks about that. Um, no, what the sense of time we have here, very different over there. And there's no way to compare it. I've been okay. over there enough that I know that their sense of time is very different. So, for instance, my aunt Dot, I had an, an aunt named Dorothy, we called her Dottie, um, died. Okay. Um, she had this cancer all the way through her body. Um, she suffered a lot. She weighed a lot. She probably weighed close to 400 pounds and she was about five foot three, five foot four, um, big, big woman struggled, suffered knees, back, shoulders, neck. I mean, you can't put that much weight on a little bitty frame and not suffer. So when she died after, and I used to make clothing for her because I used to be a seamstress. Um, and so I made specialized clothing for people who needed, uh, who couldn't get something off the rack and have it fit. Um, so when she died, I went to see her and what I was told was, no, she's still asleep. 11 years later, she was still asleep. So I said, well, it's of our years. 11 of, of our years. And I said, well, isn't that a long time to be asleep? And, and the answer I got was, no, we don't have the same sense of time over here. And I would... I didn't really know what to say. It was like, okay, a, a clock is a clock. And at the time, my own consciousness was still struggling with the, not only the differences between here and there, but the similarities. Um, that was really a rough thing. And so in the, um, in the course of a couple more visits, I'm like, well, is she awake? Well, who's going to wake her up? Um, How is that going to work? And they said, well, there's a frequency that we send out on a regular basis it's um, works kind of like an alarm clock if they hear the frequency and wake up we're ready to take care of them if they don't then we are we just keep on watching over them and i said well how long does that take and they said it takes as long as it takes and so the whole sense, if I can say it like I understood it, the whole sense of time that we have is driven by a clock. The whole sense of time that they have is driven by what's happening. It's a natural thing for people to sleep and to withdraw. And, and so when somebody does that, if they were asleep for 11 years here, we would say, pull the damn plug, <laughs> we're not doing anymore. But over there, 
um, th that's just what is. When you are, when you die and you're wide awake, for instance, and you go to the, um, you go into one of the healing centers, it's not necessarily because you're deathly ill or you had diabetes or you had cancer or heart disease or whatever. Um, you go to these healing centers to put your whole self together, to heal is to make whole. You're given some medicine every day. You drink the medicine. It looks like water. When I said, finally, well, that just looks like water. <laughs> Somebody said, it is. And I'm like, well, how the heck does that heal? And they said, because it's all done with your consciousness. If you believe you're drinking something, and it was really very special, structured, some kind of structured water. Um, if you believe that that is that you're healing and you're well taken care of and somebody comes in to chat with you regularly and you have some attention and you begin to you get led or guided to think about, OK, next, instead of I'm at the end, it's over. I don't have any more time. The time is being opened up for you. That's part of the healing. Time goes away and there are no time limits. Um, and so that's a whole different. So when you talk about making whole, that was when your consciousness is imprinted on a fetus, does the rest of you and the memories and those things. So that other part of your frequency stay. Yes. And that's your higher self. Uh, you know, that's just the rest of yourself. Okay. So you and may have. You don't... Uh, what? Say that again. I was going to let you finish your thought. Sorry. Oh, okay. So you, you bring a portion of your, you bring your base frequency set down here. Once you start having experiences here, um, you're unfolding yourself. But those uh, experiences that you have here add to the set of frequencies that you originally are. And the goal is to accumulate more positive frequencies than negative ones. Okay, the negatives are informative. They're, they give you wisdom. They, they show you what not to do. The positive ones open up, make possibilities et cetera, et cetera. And that leads to some of my conversations with some of the very advanced beings in which I tried to get them involved in brainstorming about, well, what if that plan doesn't work out? And, and you've heard me say, um, I would say, well, what if this happens? And they would say, just do this, you know? And I'm like, what's the matter with you? Why won't you argue with me? Why won't you answer that question? And and they just do this. And it's a discipline that says, I'm only going to focus on the positive. And right now, what you see on the planet is there's a whole bunch of people here that are only focused on the negative stuff, on ugly, painful, you know, invasive, destructive, really hurtful stuff. And they're, they're called Satanists. Um, or devil worshiper, or whatever you want to call them. There's two sides of life. There's the side that's all positive and powerful and good and lasts forever. And there's the side that is negative, and it's powerful, and it's very negative, and it's painful, and it doesn't last forever. It has to restart itself in new forms constantly. So, and in some ways you could say that the, I'll call it the God side does the same thing, um, but things will self-sustain a lot longer and a lot easier on the God side, as opposed to the Satan side. Okay. So, so with that being said, so those were the Satan side and the God side were decisions on this frequency at this time because by, they did by the individual, right? By the that's individual. Right. Frequency. Yeah. So if when you're in the way station, you decide I'm all done with down here, uh -huh. can you do that? Yes. So you can. I'm not going back. You cannot come back to here, but there's so many other places to go that it's, it's unbelievable how many choices there are. Um, there are, 
civilizations strewn across the entire cosmos. It doesn't, you know, there's all kinds of systems and realities and planets. Um, I always, I often think of a reality system like a piano. So this octave is this reality system, or you move up an octave. Now you're in this system, or you move up another octave and you're in that system. Um, it doesn't quite work like that because when you see how it works, you see, um, uh, I, I was going to try and do a drawing, but I haven't done it because I haven't figured out how to do it. Um, some of the frequencies, uh, let me use Tucson, Arizona as an example. Um, when I went to Tucson years and years ago, driving through Tucson on their main expressway, um, coming out of Mexico, and I get into um, Tucson and there's this area and it, the expressway drives right through it in which you have hybrid energies. And you can see both realities at the same time. And so when, and there have been many instances of that since, the realities interpenetrate and the only difference, if I can say it like that, is that you're focused over here instead of over there. But that other is still available if you can shift your frequency set to perceive it. Does that make sense? Thank yeah. you. Okay. Okay, Chuck, I see your hand up. What's your question? Yeah. Yeah. Um... That's one of the avenues that I explored after I had no connection with my children mm -hmm. was I started reading a lot of Dolores Cannon's books. Oh, okay. And I read one of hers. Yeah, okay, yeah. I started reading a lot of her books. And okay. it goes on the same line that you're saying, like, okay. we come back to learn yeah. lessons. But she talks about soul groups. I don't know if that is the case or not um yeah. you know like you work with soul groups or or the same people and like you may come back and say well i'll be the father this time you do this and then we'll both you know learn a lesson from right. me being the parent and you being the child where yeah. i was the parent last time yeah that's right um, and the soul yeah. group is very often the family that you have around you it's like, yeah. what? That's, ah, who chose yeah. that? A lot of people are freaking out. It's like, no, no. that's yeah. actually very good for you. So, yeah. 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 And I was just like, you know, looking at my last marriage and I'm like, what the hell was I doing with her? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. but oh, well. I go back and I see where if I hadn't have done what I did, yeah. I wouldn't be here today. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it's, it's a kind of a rocky path, but if you walk it, um, it gets smoother and smoother. And you know how to step just right so that you're not constantly off balance or, you know, something's hurting. So, yeah. 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 Good for you for looking back. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyway, thank you. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. Kimberly, go ahead. I um, have a question about, you know, you said that we will, I guess when we pass, we go over to the way station, we go through this process. Huh? Um, I once had somebody tell me that um, a family member of mine that had passed had been not by their soul's choice, but they had been sucked into a, um, by a kind of, I guess, negative or denser energies or something, um, yeah. into a negative constant reincarnation cycle where they just kept coming back and they kept coming back and they just lived like hundreds of lives consecutively suffering. Have you heard of anything like that? All the time. All the time. We do not take charge of ourselves and where we're going. And so we make hasty choices um, and we come back and we suffer. 
again and again and again. And that uh, always looks to me like there's a whole, uh, uh, what do you call it, sequence of lives that we we say, well, I think I could do that better. <laughs> and we get sucked right back into the same crap. And we do it again and again and again. And finally, we wake up. Finally. So, um, so it is by choice then? It would be by choice. It's always by choice. It's not like, okay. Well, the choice gets, um, how do I say this? Um, you you choose by default, by your biases, by your insistence that you know that it that you're going to have your way. Well, it doesn't work that way. Um, you're going to end up in a situation that matches what your frequency set is, and until you take charge of those frequencies, you're going to struggle. It's just that simple. <laughs> so. And, and we reincarnate over and over and over because um, whether we come here or go elsewhere, we love life. Absolutely love it. And we are, we're messy, you know, we're loud. We love the drama. Why do we love the drama? Because drama is feeling and feeling is motion and motion is life. Mm. So... Nothing wrong with a little drama, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Um, Sharon, go ahead. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out how reality works from a perspe per perception perspective. And okay, stop me at any point, because this is what I've realized, okay. is that I can pretty much secure less suffering in my life if I make decisions from a place of authenticity. Right. So then I recently had an event in my family life that totally knocked me out of where I was holding. So how do I, and I mean, it didn't do a good job. So I know I've grown because I was able to constantly re-neutralize even with the chaos that was happening. Yep. But how did I create that as, as a person who creates my reality? You're not the only one creating. There's a lot of fools all around us. And we either get sucked into that or we react to that or we get confronted with it. If you're driving down the road and a drunk driver hits you, that's not your fault. The drunk driver caused that problem for you and you have to deal with it. Why? Because you just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. That same principle occurs. We don't always choose the stuff that that is not good. I hear that a lot. People say, well, you chose this. I'm like, hell too. I did not. Um, you know, and, and the first time I heard that was with uh, a woman who had cancer. And I said that little platitude, that's a platitude. It's like a easy, meaningless answer that says, you know, it's not my problem. Well, that, you know, she was incensed um, with that. And, and, you know, that was something that was really like, oh, you know, she's right. Who, who wants cancer? Well, she, you know, she wanted other things that led to cancer. So, um, you know, you have to change your choices. You have to wake up and say, what's going on here? How did I get here? What, is, what, you know, what made me think I could eat whatever I wanted and, and not exercise and not make sure I was getting the right nutrition and, and re not reducing my stress and, and da, 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 da. So, so how does that balance with someone else creating in my life? Like, you know, in my reality is what I'm trying. I don't understand how that works. It is very frustrating for me. Because, because you you put yourself in a house, in a time and a place with some other people. When you do that, you open the door to being impacted by their creations. It's an interaction. Right. It's not, nobody's at fault, nobody's to blame. When you, I have also experienced um, being in this place, this absolutely fabulous place, and then Boom, getting kicked out of that 
and being completely thrown off and discombobulated. That is usually a, just a simple test that says, can you hold it? If you get knocked off, can you uh, return and reestablish, um, you know, et cetera. And so you, it's like exercising a muscle. Like I said, you, you come back and you, you work to get yourself back on center. So the interesting thing with this event was that I did dream it a week or so before it happened, which, oh, wow. made, which made processing it a lot easier and, yeah. and took the shock element out of it for me. What a gift. Yeah. yeah, it really was a gift. And I don't know who to thank. Do I thank myself or do I thank yes. higher powers or what is that? Who did you that? You are the higher power. Yes, you thank yourself. Um, what I said, and I maybe said it a couple of times, your consciousness begins to feed you. Yeah. It feeds you what you need to know so that you're not totally, um, you know, thrown overboard and drowning in the ocean of whatever <laughs> frequencies. So then the other thing that happened was that week I had, a, I, I have deja vu things all the time where I've, yeah. I've experienced a scene that happens, but right. in this case, there was a familiarity to it and a, um, uh, Oh, look here, this, this has to happen almost kind of feeling to it. <laughs> and I don't know how that works in reality. Like what, what was I experiencing? Cause sometimes it feels like the, the experience like kind of like comes and layers on top of something like a template of some sort. Yeah, right. You're the template. So the experience comes in, you have an opportunity to say, oh, look at that, feel that, hear that, well, you know, et cetera. And you're experiencing whatever that is, but it doesn't take over your core self. Okay. Mm. So when you start to experience that layering impact, then you're starting with the basics of maintaining your own core. Okay. You're building the rock inside that you need. It's mm -hmm. like, no, you know, you can put water on a rock, but it doesn't sink in generally. You can put sand on it. You can put dirt on it. You can paint it. You can do all kinds of stuff, but the rock stays the same. So that is what you need to do to become eternal. Okay. So you're working on that and you're really doing quite well. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, Josie, go ahead. Hi, Penny. Um, so you said that we can choose, you know, uh, not to go to the way station and reincarnate on Earth. I'm just wondering then, how would I choose where I'd want to be? Is it defined by what I want to experience? Like what criteria would I set my intention so I end up, in this place that I would, you know, like experience what I want, like, or how would I be guided if I'm not coming back to the same old place here? Okay, so this is uh, gets a little complicated, but you end up before you die having to communicate your wishes to family, friends, guides, teachers, the universe, your consciousness, etc. At the time of death, you will be met by someone. If it's family, typically they're going to say, come with us. If it's not, and it's somebody saying, um, are you Josie? And are you the one who said you, you wanted to go blah, blah, blah here? Come with us. And then you go. It's, that's it. There are other um, cities, massive cities that are available um, that you can go into. And you can go to any, once you've done some study, almost all the cities require some kind of processing of the life. So, it, so I, my first reaction to what you were saying is be careful um, because what happens when you don't study the life you just had is you repeat it somewhere else thinking, well, if, if I just change the location and I just go to this different world where everything is wonderful, then you're going to end up stumbling over your own self because you haven't really integrated what you've learned in this life, which is wonderful. So, you know, just be aware that, yes, you can give directions. I tell people, don't wait until you're dead to assess your life, mm -hmm. you know, 
go through it like you're, you know, like this is your last day or you just died yesterday and make notes. You know, what did I learn from this? You'll have a pretty good amount of recall. Um, and when you get, uh, when you get to the a place where you discover something that you, you realize, whoa, um, sometimes that will change your plan. Uh, the other thing I would say in, in saying be careful <laughs> is that we have a lot of false and fantasy-based ideas about other realities. And we think we know where we're going and we don't. And we get into those and... and it's, so these inner journeys that I've experienced, whether, you know, in altered trance states or hypnosis, like I have memories and, and, and experiences of being in this crystal city kind of thing and, the, and yeah. the where there was only lightning beings and all this is that could be just you know something that i'm making up and it's not my no. home planet or whatever no that's a place of learning that's a place of power that's a place of deep 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 education um you can go there but you typically don't stay there okay um, you go there and then you get sent on a expedition Right. <laughs> so, so okay. when we come back here and you know our memories are wiped and, and we continue but our you know we keep the wisdom right those frequencies are holding at least the wisdom from the lessons we learned like that yeah. really bothers me that the memory gets wiped and i have to start all over every freaking time <laughs> so that's the risk <laughs> so, <laughs> that's when i say to people watch out you're just going to end up wasting or you end up dying too soon and then you have to start over and starting over is incredibly risky because even though you plan it all out it doesn't it almost never goes as planned yeah so um you know we have a tendency once we get to the point where we're saying we're, we're only going to look on the good side well then when you plan and you're only looking on the good side you didn't look at what was what were the negative things? Mm -hmm. So, so when you say, oh, you know, you, you can happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. So it can yeah. be like accidental. It's not that all is in synchronicity because I'm in a frequency alignment with everything that I'm attracting or that's happening. It can just be like haphazard. Right. Oh. Right. It, it's, it, it is <laughs> haphazard. It's very dynamic. Um, the things that you don't choose get chosen by default. Can I say that again? You either are choosing consciously or you're just drifting and letting things happen. That's called living according to fate. Whatever well, happens, you you're going to deal with. It sounds like contradiction because you say, you know, no matter what's happening in the world, you're creating your own reality, even though you, you are mass consciousness. So how much am okay. I victim to the, to, to the accidents and how much am I creating because I'm empowered that I'm creating it? So I'm a little confused by those two. Okay, so let's say it differently. You're creating your response. Okay. Period. <laughs> Until you begin to create deliberately and on purpose, mm -hmm. mostly just reacting. You're creating your reaction, which then shapes your reality. Okay, so being proactive and putting it out there, what I'm creating is, is, a, is a buffer of sorts. To That's right. Help. That's and right. when you say your consciousness, is that your higher self that you're, that you're like um, uh, basically pointing to every time you say your consciousness is telling you this, your consciousness? No, that's your, that's your, that's you. That's okay. your consciousness. So it's different than my higher self, if you will, or the higher. There is no higher self. I don't There's use no. that term. Okay. I mean, gotcha. there's a whole self. You can have access to the rest of yourself, but to say higher is to say, well, you know, I want to go up there and skip all this stuff. Well, that isn't the way that it works. You take your whole self with you wherever you go. You're developing that whole self. Eventually, you become source. And then you are everything. You're the seedbed of source. Source is the seedbed of you. Thank you, Penny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, David, go ahead. Um, okay, so uh, I also don't like the idea of how you lose all your memories. That doesn't sit well with me either. Um, well, I, if we I, had a different culture, we wouldn't <laughs> lose them all. You get little kids who remember a lot. Yeah, a lot. so then it, it gets beaten out of you, right? It kind of as you That's go right. along, at least in our culture. So 
the whole thing, the idea that you were saying about where, you know, they would tell dreams around the table in the morning. That sounds like yeah. really cool. Like uh, something I would like to grow up with, but I mean, just bringing that into our, like, I mean, bringing that into our current culture, I mean, that wouldn't even be a problem, right. For people who are aware that that's even a beneficial thing to do for kids, right. For kids. To yeah. Really like to yeah. Share that. Kind of we stuff, don't so. understand dreams. We don't. I yeah. do it with my kids, all my kids, you know, Okay, you did what that with them growing up. Pardon? You still, you still do that. You still do. Yes. That? Yes. Oh, we cool. share dreams back and forth. Yeah. Um, dreams of information, dreams of warning, dreams of whatever. Oh, cool. It's like, All right. I had this dream. That's how I keep track of my kids. <laughs> so, um, so if you lose, so, um, if you lose all your memories, how exactly are you like learning something? I mean, let me see if I'm, if I kind of understand what you're saying, but, um, like when you, you have some experience on earth, you live a life, you have all this, all this horrible stuff happens, a bunch of good stuff happens. Hopefully the good stuff outweighs the bad stuff, but yeah, you develop a frequency set as you call it, which I I'm willing to just take that on face value. Okay. okay. I kind of get what you're saying. I don't know if I completely get it, but so you get that frequency set. Some of it's good. Some of it's bad. You take it with you when you leave this place and then you integrate it into your base frequency set. And then you come back again with your base frequency set. Is that kind of, um, okay. Uh, so we're getting into biology a little bit here. Um, you know, you know what I would recommend. Have you watched the plasma class, the little, the little set of three classes um, on plasma? Um, it's on my Patreon. Okay. Uh, I think I, I did watch some of those. Yeah. I okay. don't know if I watched all of them. I should go rewatching them. Yeah. Part three um, kind of gives you an insight into how you develop. Okay. So you start out as an egg and a sperm is a little tiny bit of frequencies. Okay. Um, and then that grows into become a fetus and that fetus is capable of holding your base set of frequencies. So you have this whole set of frequencies coming from the mother and the father, the egg and the sperm. Okay. And now you add your particular frequencies in yeah, it just gets a little complex. In some of the uh, ancient uh, knowledge systems, they talk about the ray of an individual. What color is your ray or are your base rays? It could be red, it could be green, it could be blue, they could be yellow, it could be white. That base set of frequencies interacts with you, the mom and pop sperm and egg set of frequencies, which all interacts with your siblings once you're born and your school and your first work experiences and your loves and your, you know, all of that. And so you end up, you have this base set of frequencies and you continually add to that. It's the same principle as me realizing, you know, with my daughter, oh my God, I wish I had stayed home. She was running after me. Oh, mama, just stay home oh, one day, please, mama, just one day. And I ignored her and kept on walking. And, and she was crushed, absolutely crushed. And something changed in her from that point forward. And I could see that change. And my feeling was I made a mistake. I wish I hadn't done that. I could have stayed home. Maybe I'd have gotten fired. I don't know. Um, but it was only one day she was asking for. So when I created the second um, option, which was I stayed home and we did all these fun things, played in the sandbox, made peanut butter and gel jelly sandwiches and had a picnic, went to the library, got books, went and got some ice cream, all this stuff. That stood because it was created with such intensity as an alternate set of frequencies that said to her, I love you. I care. Yes, I'm listening. I'm responding. So when you come in here, you're doing essentially that same concept. You have a base set of frequencies, and now you're going to add to it with all these other options and possibilities that are presented by the time, the place, and the actions going on around you. So does that make sense so far? 
Yeah. Okay, so you'll have a base set of frequencies that are going to interact to build you um, right from the start. That's your mom and I call them mom and pop frequencies. Um, and then there's your core frequency, which interacts with that set. So now you've got three frequencies interacting and you've got all sorts of secondary, tertiary, uh, quaternary, quinary, quintary, I forget how what five is, um, frequency sets that continue to interact and unfold and you are added to. You well, don't I wonder it's so messy then. Right? It's messy. Yeah. Because it's all those you a frequency, they can cancel each other out, they can amplify each other, they can That's just right. generally, generally speaking, right? That's right. Frequencies. When you walk into the forest and you just walk along and you look at the ground and you ask yourself, you know, who cleans this? Who sweeps this? Who vacuums? Who scrubs? Nobody. Nobody. Mother nature is the perfect example of just adding on. The forest floor is messy. There's puddles, there's sticks, trees are down, the ground is uneven. Um, there's stones sticking up here and there, um, whatever, all kinds of stuff. Mother nature is incredibly dynamic and she is very messy and it works. It works beautifully. And when we try to clean stuff up, we end up sterilizing it and it doesn't work. So if, if you so. did remember your, your, your last life, let's say before you in, in this life, would that mess everything up? Because like, you've got all these biases no. and things from the previous. <clears throat> so um, why, why did, why is, what's the reason for, for leaving all that stuff behind them? There's gotta be a reason for that. And they can't, it's either gotta be a positive reason there's got to be some reason or maybe there's multiple reasons but i guess the point is is okay. it feels like a well, negative you, thing but it, maybe it's a positive thing maybe there's a, po a positive reason for it you know a positive like, reason why don't you come for... into this life not remembering all of my past lives like i would like to like i think i would like to remember all of my past lives no you but, wouldn't well You'd right so why is that a bad idea because it's because you wouldn't be able to interact in this one with the kind of intensity and focus that adds to you dramatically. When because, you okay. so when, after Kundalini, yeah. I had quite a bit of memory of my last life. I was yeah. very disturbed by that. Um, it wasn't very good. Okay, so um, and I came back somewhat quickly. Um, these last, you know, last half dozen lives have been right in a row. But uh, the you can do that when you're really old, when you get to be really old, okay? Because um, you can handle a lot. So you'll have a breakthrough um, of memories every so often. And, and I remember the breakthrough for me was the wallpaper. It was like, oh, my God, and the carpeting. They have, we had, this was my thought, we had those in Chicago in the 1920s. The same big flower rose wallpaper and carpeting with big old flowers on it. Um, and as soon as that hit, then I began picking up other little pieces of what I did in that life. And it was very unnerving. Um, because I was dealing with Al Capone. I was a prostitute. Um, we went to Hot Springs, Arkansas. It, it was messy. It was messy. So I had this whole thing that happened that I, um, I wrote about, I think, just a little bit in one of my books. I think it was Evolving Human. Unbeknownst to me, I'm thinking that I must have, you know, oh, my gosh. And long story short, I, I went to Hot Springs. I, I got upset with Capone because um, he wasn't paying enough attention to me. I ended up sleeping with somebody else. He got mad. Um, he abandoned me. I'm down there with no money. I'm trying to work down there as a prostitute. They're closing all the bathhouses. I ended up drinking. I ended up, you know, leaving very early. So long story short, um, I'm telling my, uh, you know, I'm telling some of this story in the book. My mother gets a copy of Evolving Human 
she happens to lend it the following year to a neighbor of hers. And the neighbor had just written a book about Al Capone and his girlfriend, who was a prostitute that he left in Hot Springs, Arkansas, who then became a drifter and died early and et cetera, et cetera. And I was floored, was like, whoa. Okay, so a little bit of confirmation there. It wasn't anything I was really proud of. <laughs> um, and, and come to find out the place, the town where my mom lives, lived, because she's no longer here, was, um, had a big dance hall where Capone and his cronies would get away to the North Woods and they would go up to that town. So the connections between myself and Capone exist. It's not something that I talk about a lot. And it's something that is like, well, I learned a lot, um, you know, about a lot of things. I, I learned a lot. I spent some time working with that. Um, when I went to Hot Springs, my, my husband, Jim, said, well, let's go on vacation. You are so strong out. And it was right at the end before Kundalini was where I was finally beginning to integrate. Um, so we go to Hot Springs. He says, let's go to Hot Springs. I'm like, um, okay. So we go there and we rent a room at this hotel and I could not get out of the 1920s the whole time we were there. And I said to him at one point, I have been in this exact same room before. And so he, you know, He's an early riser. I like to sleep in. He got up the next morning. He's out wandering around the halls of the hotel. And right around the corner, there's a room with a black brass plate on it that says Al Capone. I was like, <laughs> okay. So you begin to understand that you have some connections there. But hopefully this life here is engrossing enough that this is where you're focused. This is where your attention and your energy is going. You think so, when you feel ambivalent about this life, it's uh, maybe a bleeding through of that, like knowing or sort of a knowing that like, oh, here we go again. Like, this is just another life. Like it's kind of, you know what I mean? Like when you okay. get into that state of being ambivalent, is it kind of uh, some of that maybe bleeding through to being like, well, ambivalent about uh, being here, ambivalent about Capone. Yes, I was very ambivalent about Capone in the end, the bugger. So it, it really becomes just another facet of the self that makes you very humble, that makes you aware that this is not all there is. Right. Um, and I'll, I'll just comment on you, your, yourself, um, you, the comment that you made or question that you asked a few minutes ago was something like this. Um, but what is the reason for? So that tells me that you're looking for logical answers. Mm -hmm. And it's not all logic. Um, logic is something that you use to either justify or make decisions based on. Sure. Sometimes you just have to observe and say, that's what is, period. It's what is, and you don't make any judgments, and you don't make any decisions. You just take it into account. And that, you know, that kind of shapes the way that you move through life. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, going with the flow has always been a struggle for me. So it, I and it maybe is. that's... It's for a lot of people. You're not the only one. So you're just a really good example of that. I love logic. Love it. As yeah, like everything has to make sense for me, right? It's like if somebody says something, it's like, okay, cool. But it has to make sense. It has to fit with everything else. If it doesn't fit, then I'm throwing it out. Like, Or <laughs> I'm going to take a deeper look and see if there's something I'm missing. But you know what I mean? Like, yes. I have to, it has to fit. It has to make sense. Okay. So, so according to my I current do, understanding, while at the same time being flexible and saying maybe it. my Very current good. understanding will, will change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I have a filing cabinet and a closet. These are yeah. mental. When it, something doesn't fit, mm -hmm. and I think it's important, but I can't figure out why I put it in the filing cabinet. When yeah. I run into something that I don't like and it doesn't fit, and I can't see what to do with that. I put it in my mental closet. It's like, well, okay, let's just store that. So you have to have little 
structures, mental structures like that, where you can say, well, I don't know what to do with this. And so you put it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a skill all its own is, is learning to like, if you hear somebody saying something and it doesn't resonate with you, it's like, don't just think badly about that person. Don't be like, oh, this person's this idiot. Just yeah. bookmark it and maybe go back to it later. Or, yeah. or maybe they don't know what they're talking about, but you know, you never know. Right. So, well, you don't, we don't, I mean, maybe later you'll know. Right. I guess that's right. Yeah. So my question is always, I wonder how they got that way. <laughs> <laughs> you're so. very, you're a lot more patient in that regard than I am for sure. Well, um, which I but, didn't used to be. Yeah. I didn't used to be. I guess so. it's the whole purpose of expanding your consciousness is broadening your perspective. And then you get to that point, yeah. or at least that's one purpose, but yeah. Um, I, uh, you've already talked so much, but I, uh, if you want to say anything about this, feel free. If not, if it's too big a topic, um, I was just wondering when you were saying about um, you were sort of alluding to like, you know, a per, you can be, you can quickly decide to come back or, you know, you, I guess you explicitly said this, you can yeah. quickly decide to come back or you can be patient and you can wait and you can then, you know, figure stuff out and choose when to, you choose when to come back, where to come back. So I was just wondering, does it, does a person's like where they are, in life, like their birth date, their numerology stuff, even their mm -hmm. astrological chart. And I know you don't get into astrology, but yeah, um, but I like it. <laughs> why, you know, does when you look at your birth chart, you look at all your your numerology, the oh. family you're born into, the culture, the country, and the circumstances. Does all that and does that imply anything about your patients prior to coming in here? Like, if you ended up in a better spot. You have a, a, let's say better in maybe a relative term, but you're, you were born into a good family or you had a, your numerology says, oh, you're going to like, you've got a, a lot of whatever, you know, in your numerology, that's like pretty good okay. stuff for our astrology chart. Does that imply anything or is that like a bad way to think about it? I don't know. No. Um, the, the thing that I would say is that when you're coming back here, you're not thinking about numerology, astrology, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. What you're, what you're actually working with is a set of forces. So they don't use all that labeling that we have. Oh, this is numbers. Oh, this yeah. is. Okay. Yeah, you're it. working with a set of forces. Yeah. And that's really the main thing. But does sense. it result in that? Does it result in like yes, because the birth those date forces, and all that stuff? Because all forces result from the interaction of frequencies, and frequencies mm -hmm. in the, among the advanced cultures have been mapped and studied, and you can predict exactly what is going to um, be the result down the road of those frequencies and then you know other cultures have experimented well what if we add this what if we take away that you get a different result because the forces have shifted okay so we can talk about numerology and it it adds to our understanding of oh maybe that's part of the way i am but really what we're talking about is these are forces that have that impacted you and that shaped your uh, configuration right from the get go. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, th I think <laughs> I'll have to think about it some more. All this stuff I have to like, yeah, put yeah. It in the hopper and let it let it go around okay. a few times. But it's I think it's a big subject too, or a big like yeah, question. So anyway, okay. uh, thanks a lot. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> Can I just add something, Penny? Because I, yeah. I understand David's questions, as you know, that I ask a lot of questions as well. But something that wasn't mentioned yet is that our natural evolution as a human was supposed to have Kundalini. So we come in without any memories, but at some point we were meant to evolve unfold. or conscious unfold and be able to remember much more about ourselves. So we're not naturally we're supposed to just right now we don't but it's not we're not natural right now so so just know that the human being should evolve we're not it's not a prison that we yeah. come in and we're, we we forget everything so that is so true thanks for that daphne and i call that arrested development we are designed to unfold at puberty and something has has gone wrong we don't unfold at all and that is tragic so our development as full human beings has been arrested or stopped. 
and that is uh, very sad. So, okay. Ah, thanks for that, Daphne. Okay, Anna, go ahead. Oh no. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I sort of have. Uh, you were talking a little bit earlier with um, Josie's questions about this thing of consciousness and trusting, and um, I guess that thing of fantasy, and in the yeah. sense of um, been working with uh, more in intelligences. Like for a long time, I've been trying to work with uh, or can communicate with different intelligences. And I think you mentioned good. a while back, somebody had asked, why weren't they talking to her? Because, and then the comment came back about being a doormat. And I was like, oh, maybe that was why. <laughs> so, yeah. But in the last few months, that um, seems to have been working a bit more and sort of having a bit more communication with the trees. And then different things coming in. And then I felt like my partner who passed away about six and a half years ago, he came to visit to say goodbye because he was going to go somewhere else. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, I've had uh, that experience. Yeah. And it was interesting because he kind of came in with a smell. And that's how I kind of felt like he was there. Yeah. But it's like it's not super clear. And then um, a friend asked me to work with her because I do energy type of work around this whole vaccine situation because a lot of people yeah. are like having to make that choice no job no jab and so some people are choosing the jab because it's kind of end of the road um yeah so she asked me to work with her and then kind of it just sort of everything happened quite spontaneously and it sort of turned into this thing of communicating with what it is that's in the body and like I don't have enough scientific understanding to describe things no. <laughs> but it's, it's like but it's like getting the sense that there's a couple of different intelligences there but okay. just working with one of them and and working with them and some of the stuff in, came into my mind about your sort of thing like I said because I said so and sort of this thing of help instructing it or working with it to leave the body and take all the active parts of it and everything coming out so they can kind of reclaim their sovereignty and and it's like I feel like this is happening and I feel like also this intelligence doesn't like what it's been created to do and it okay and it wants to go or a level and I feel like I've been creating a relationship with it and it feels very strange and I just I'm like am I deluded or is this really happening and because I've worked with a couple of people but and there's been some interesting physiological responses because yeah, asking yeah. it to leave through the digestive system. So there's been some interesting stool occurrences. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to say we are very, very powerful. So examples of that power would be like the creation of Philip, the guy who was created by the group in Toronto back mm -hmm. in the 1920s, somewhere in there. Um, remember yeah, yeah. talking about Philip? Yeah. He was the guy that they said, let's see if we can create this, this consciousness. And, um, and after a year, the, the, they said it's going to be male and it's 24 years old. And he died uh, suddenly, tragically, um, and da-da-da-da-da. And so they started talking to Philip. They ended up creating a field of consciousness that was able to not only communicate with them, but move physical objects around the room. Mm -hmm. And they, they got frightened at that point and they abandoned the whole thing. You can create somebody to talk to. However, there are so many consciousness, consciousnesses out there um, that really would like to still communicate with people on earth in order to keep that connection there, it's just like, well, that's kind of family, kind of that thing, you know, or that way of looking at it. Um, they will, they will communicate with you if you open up. So there's really not, we are not developed enough to be able to say, that's a fantasy, that's a created entity, and that is an entity that really existed. So at this point in time, I would say if, if, if I were in your shoes, I would keep working with that because that is obviously your path of learning. And what you learn 
you can then contribute back to the field of consciousness. This is what I understand. This is what happens. You'll get better at it as you go along. Okay. That is something that is, I think, absolutely essential, is that people begin saying, well, th I'm interested in doing this. And then uh, so my attitude is do it, go do it and report back what actually happens. What's the outcome? And what's the outcome one year down the road, five years down the road, eight, 10, 12, 20? Um, because you keep learning as you go along and it, you refine your knowledge. And that is really wonderful. So um, when I have... Like when, like when my mom came to me or when my brother and sister, who are both on the other side, um, came and woke me up out of a dead sleep at four in the morning, one morning, and said, come on, we're going to have a party. Um, and, and, and we did. And so we sat up, we sat on the bed, talked, laughed, shared memories. Oh, my God, we had the best time for two hours. And then I laid back down and went back to sleep. At that point, it, you know, that's not a fantasy. That's their real selves coming to interact with me. And the reason was because they said, Tim, my brother, Tim, was going to go away to school. And I knew immediately that that meant he was getting ready to become someone else and therefore not available to us in his original form. OK, so um, so he's that's a couple of years ago now. He's between elementary school and high school. Um, I just sent a message out maybe two months ago and said, I haven't heard anything. How's Tim doing? So we'll see. We'll see what I'll get a message somewhere along the line. So you'll know when you if it's, you know, a real person, it's somebody that is so present. And you will either smell or hear or you'll feel them touch you. And, and you'll have a, a knowing at that moment of, oh, that's, you know, that's so-and-so. Um, if it's fantasy, you can create somebody. If I was on a desert island all by myself, stranded, I would probably create several people to talk to. And the modern psychologist would say, well, she's nuts. She's talking to somebody. Well, yeah. You know, that is considered nuts. That is, however, um, just one aspect of our power to create. We don't have to create using sex and having a baby. Sure. We create all the time. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, that, and that's what it felt like when Pedro came. It was like he, he wouldn't be the same again. And that. That's right. At that, that was why he was saying goodbye, and it was and it was fine because I sort of dealt with a lot of my issues yeah. with him. Yeah. So it was, I know. Him. And so I'm yeah, my angry. reaction was no, no, <laughs> don't go yet, don't go yet. But uh, he's going. <laughs> That's all there is to it. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I guess with this intelligence with the whole vaccine thing, it's like it's it's like I can't. It's not something I can go and verify whether it's actually truly left their bodies or not. With yeah, you just have to know. Just have to know. So yep. yeah, and it's yeah. hard to trust that knowingness. Like a lot of the doubts come in. You know, instead of worrying about trust, just say thank you, thank you for letting me know. When you do that, you acknowledge. You make it real and you let them know I'm open for further information, further input. So, yeah. yeah. I feel like this is something I'm meant to do because there's a lot of people in pain here. Like, I'm, you know, they're going and getting this thing and they're in incredible anger or they're literally crying their ways through it. And That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And the other question I was supposed to ask was um, clarifying around remote okay. viewing, out of body, um, astral projection, things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm glad. I hope all of you get something out of these little conversations. No, I think I think it's not clear. So people think there's a different process with remote viewing, out of body, oh, uh, dreams. No. It's all the same. But that's what I wanted you to clarify because they were talking about it in the chat. And it oh, wasn't clear. Okay. Yeah, don't hesitate to ask you guys. There's no difference between remote viewing out of body, 
um, you know, dreaming, your body is in one spot. That's not where your consciousness is. Consciousness is what's real. Period. When we talk in intuition, too, about the language of energy, I was thinking about this this morning. What we're really talking about is the language of consciousness. And what is consciousness? It's energy. What is energy? It's consciousness. So I could call it either one. But the fact of the matter is that consciousness is going to use the form that energy takes in order to get the message across to you. I hope that makes sense. So what we're practicing here is expanding your consciousness by teaching you to put it in other places and then just pick up what you pick up and then, you know, learn from that, understand that, go further. Very easy. No, no. No, no. Uh, hang on one second, you guys. Come here. Oh, never mind. Okay. They're all in here now. Um, okay. All right, Lynn, go ahead. <laughs> Your turn. So my question, Penny, is what is what is your distinction or if there is a distinction between the um, highest self um, and the I am? Um, wow, that's a good question. So the I am doesn't have an individual self, okay? It is everything. It's the source of, of all things that take form, whether that's a planet or water or just the motion of the air or whatever. That's the, that's the I am source. I don't really talk about the higher self um, we are all higher selves, if you want to use that term. <clears throat> and the, it's really, it's not a higher self. It's just a self that has more experience with going out and getting the information at once, bringing right, that back. Right. Yeah. I'm beginning. I, that was something I had a little um, misunderstanding about until recently. And then I did. And then then the, the I am, which, you know, again, it's like, okay, so what is that? But that's clear. I, that's clear for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because the I am is just the source. It's, you know, it's and the source. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, yeah, mm -hmm. and the high, you know, the higher, highest self, whatever. That's just somebody who maybe has a little more experience who's out there kind of going, <laughs> it's like, yeah. I've kind of, yeah. I've given her a nickname. Oh, very good. <clears throat> I've given her a nickname so that it kind of is like when I need help, like, okay, now can you just, or I okay. give so that I actually, instead of dying, I'm like, well, can, can you help me here? I need a look. That's right. That's how so, you do it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You make actually, it real. You make yeah, her. So I've, I've actually given, <laughs> somebody said the other day, there's like, as long as you don't talk to yourself, I'm like, well, I do that, but I'm not really talking, you know, I'm like, well, I'm not going to give it. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can say I'm talking to somebody else. She's a little smarter than I am. <laughs> She's a little smarter than I am. She just been around the block a few more times, maybe. Right, but, right. Um, and, and then I have one other just um, short question, I think. Okay. Uh, what, so as with when people, because this is this, this thing that this, uh, the thing about walk-ins, you know, which I've heard in like yep. the months. I've never even heard anything about that until then. So is that, did they come, are they, is that just from another dimension or are they like for coming from the way station? People are like, Oh, I'm coming into sub for you for a little bit. I mean, it's yeah. like, what's the distinction there or how does it relate? I'm not sure I understand the question, but I'll say about a walk-in um, when somebody, let's use an example of the way station, somebody's at the way station, right. they want to come back. They don't want to start over at birth. They okay. just want to come in and do a particular job. Somebody on the planet who happens to be in the right place at the right location, the right connections, um, and wants out. And they have considered <clears throat> suicide. Um, or taking themselves out in some way, um, or, or just praying, Lord, take me, Lord, take me, that kind of thing. 
there can be an exchange. It usually happens at night and the person who's coming in, uh, the person who's leaving vacates at the same time the person who's coming in comes in. Um, there's, uh, it doesn't always happen that way. Um, sometimes it can happen during a meditation. Sometimes it can happen at, at death. The person literally dies. The person who wants out mm -hmm. dies. And the person who's coming in uh, comes in and says, <laughs> yeah, I'm all better now. So we end up, there's, it doesn't happen a, a lot, but it does happen. So, um, yeah, just be aware that the walk-in, um, sometimes there's another form, I don't talk about it much, but there's another form of walk-in in which, um, how do I say this? Um, you're in a place, um, I'm just trying to think of some sort of an example. Um, gosh, I can't think of anything right now, but you're in a place where there's some kind of danger or some kind of issue or there's something very, very uh, pressing happening and you suddenly uh, expand or walk out, it's called a walk out, of your own body-mind system and two options happened. One a, a spirit, an individual from the other side steps in, but only momentarily to handle that situation. Or if you are old enough and have enough experience and wisdom, you become that other person temporarily and handle the situation as something absolutely miraculous happens or a totally unexpected. And then the person vacates and you're back to being yourself you may or may not remember what you, what you, what happened while you were gone. Um, you can't really say that's something that you did because you weren't the one that was occupying the body at that moment, but it'll be attributed to you. So um, that's, an, there's, there's all, so, I like to think of it as um, shenanigans. Yeah, there's all yeah. sorts of shenanigans that happen in consciousness. Yeah, I, th I there was something that when you said that I was like, oh wow! So I, I you, there was something really traumatic that happened to me when my in my early thirties, and um, the way I describe it is that it was like there were there was somebody that pulled me out. I thought, I mean, I could see it was almost like being dead, but I wasn't. I mean, it was it was like I was being guarded, you know, from what was yes. happening. And, yeah. you know, so then when it was over, I was back, but I didn't feel, you know, people were all kinds of like, are you, don't you need help? I'm like, I can't yeah. explain it. It's like, I wasn't, I, I, I saw it, but I wasn't there. So I yeah. didn't feel, <laughs> Very good. And, you know, tr the, so it wasn't, it was like, whoever, however, I, I came out and yeah. knew what was happening, but I, I never felt that. Um, that you were really, really traumatized by it, right? I wasn't, and yeah. I was like, something wrong with me that I'm not. Oh, no, but, that's no, I did. Really it was like, you know, that, that I'm, I'm like, because I wasn't there, I felt like I had was actually saved for some, yeah. you know, that I was actually taken out so that I wouldn't, I wouldn't experience that. That I knew what it was, but I didn't have that, that, that same kind of feeling. Yeah, very good. Okay. That's a wise woman. Okay, I'm out of here. I'll be back later. <laughs> so, Thank you, Penny. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, Jesse, go ahead. What's your question? Yeah, sometimes when I um, sit down, usually sit down to meditate, okay. I direct my in intention and energy in a certain way. Yep. And I get this uncontrollable shaking in my spine. Oh, gosh. And yeah. Some people call that, I think, Kriyas. Oh, but uh, uh, I wonder if you could elaborate on that. Is that, what is that? Um, I don't know about the word Kriyas, or, and I don't understand any of that language stuff that comes from over there. But um, when that shaking occurs, your frequency system is adjusting itself dramatically. 
And so when you sit down to meditate and you get that shaking, that's a sign of spiritual expansion right there, hands down. So it's a pre-signal or forerunner of Kundalini. Okay. okay. Cool. Thank you. And I have one more <laughs> quick question. Okay. Um, yesterday when we briefly uh, talked, it yeah. looked like we, we were just like talking about one thing and then it looked like you got a really scared look on your face. So okay. I was wondering if you saw something with me that was shocking or something. I don't recall that at all. Um, okay. You know, sometimes I will be concerned about something that somebody's saying, but um, typically when that occurs, I'm going to say something. It's like, well, what about this? Or what if that? But I don't remember feeling scared. So Okay. Well, that's uh, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Deb, go ahead. Um, let's see. Yeah, we still... Actually, you guys are just reading my mind. This morning was for Q&A. This afternoon is for dreams. So um, go ahead, Deb. Hmm. Hold on. Sorry. There, there you Got go. It? Okay. Yeah. So this, I was I had a question about my consciousness and if if what was happening this morning was my consciousness rolling into um, different images and feelings that were coming. It lasted for about an hour. I wasn't asleep. Okay. Um, and it was just a series. I mean, like it seemed like hundreds of different images coming through yeah, and scenes. And I thought, what the heck is this? Like, why am I experiencing this? And then um, just as I was saying that I, an image of me drinking a glass of water in like a crystal clear glass, um, it, it kind of morphed into the glass morphed into like that plasma symbol that we talked about yesterday. Oh yeah. And I swallowed and it coated my throat and my stomach. And then it created a, um, like a, a, an opaque room in my stomach. It was peaceful, beautiful, silent. It was like a, an awesome place to be. But then it, it came crystal clear and I could see out through into my body, into different parts of it. Yeah. And then it went opaque again and it was silent and, you know, peaceful and all of that. Um, and then, um, uh, then I asked why I was seeing all of this. And then, um, it, it, something came through that each cell has a specific memory and every memory at the same time. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't sure what that meant. Um, and then I was kind of melding into like all these different images I was seeing, but I was feeling them. It's kind of like I was melding into them. Okay. Um, and then um, there were three things that stuck out. And um, uh, one of them was the, um, there was a set of matchsticks, just like two that, that crossed like that. They were unspent matches. Yeah. And it just kept coming through. I, I, I didn't get a feeling with it. So I don't know what that was. Um, and then there were three Amish girls skipping along. They had on dresses. They were wearing like bandanas on their head. Um, and at first I could see them at eye level. And then I was looking from a distance, like up at them, kind of, yep. kind of like I had shrunk sort of, and I was looking up from a distance. Um, and then the, the next thing that came through was um, um, there was a darker, it's almost like taffy that was being pulled away from my left side. And oh, it yeah. felt like there was space being made like open in me. Mm -hmm. But I asked, um, as that was peeling away, like, like brownish colored taffy, um, I just said, wait a second, will I need that to move forward? Like what, what's going on? And, um, uh, I was just told that I would not need that to move forward. Yeah. Um, and then my body just felt more spacious and light, but, um, some of the stuff that was happening reminded me of years ago, I was talking with someone and as they're sitting on the couch, I started seeing faces flip over theirs 
and I would feel something with each face that flipped. Oh. And, but so I was picking up feelings as the faces flipped, but whenever all these things were zooming in and out and going crazy, there were feelings with those things. But sometimes it felt like I was uh, like melding into them, almost becoming them sort of. Yeah, you do. At the same time. So yeah. I didn't know what that was about, but so. Um, so you're not sure what, what was about the whole thing? Kind of the whole thing. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that is when that kind of thing happens, you have slipped into a purely clairvoyant state. And for you, that's going to be see, feel. Some people hear, feel. Some people feel, see. But you are obviously somebody who's, who see, feels. Okay. Seeing is primary. Feeling is secondary. And they, they mesh, they mesh etc. Um, all the little things that happened, um, you're rolling through the scenes, the glass, the, you know, becomes this plasma formation. Um, and, and you take it into your stomach. That means that the symbolism of that is that suddenly the glass symbolizes clarity, being able to see, you know, it's as clear as glass, or we say, oh, it's as clear as mud when it's not clear. But glass symbolizes clarity, and that's ex almost exactly the word you use. Um, I could see into every cell in my body, etc. So it's a moment of clarity. And then you have these matchsticks, um, and they're <clears throat> not, they haven't been burnt. They're not spent yet. And so what that says is that there's going to be a spark maybe a double spark that's going to, um, you know, awaken or start the fire. Um, that fire is Kundalini. Kundalini is fire. Um, and then the three Amish girls, um, look at the word Amish. Uh, you could say it differently. Amish. Um, you am, I am, they am. <laughs> so the three Amish girls indicates three aspects of yourself that will be deeply affected or will step up into prominence. Um, and you're kind of looking at them as if they're above you. Uh, and then the brownish taffy like thing coming out, um, that's never, you want that <laughs> to be out of you. That is like plaque or goo or um, energy that is not helpful and that slows down the perception that you would normally be having. So um, it's really, it's a whole series of clairvoyant information pieces for you to assimilate. Okay. 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 And they're, they're good. They're good. Just okay. Watch out for the Kundalini one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank good. you. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Bye. Go ahead. Hi. Hello. Um, Penny, I hi. I'm interested in um connecting more with nature, with the trees and the birds and the insects. And I'm curious about the consciousness of all of these things. And like I'm finding myself talking to the spider in my garden and yeah. just like talking to everything. And I'm just wondering about their consciousness and like are do humans reincarnate as animals and that dogs and things like that just curious about not all specifically that. well I, let me encourage you to connect with nature because hardly anybody's doing that um and that's really 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 important um connect with trees with plants with stones with grass with birds with whatever comes across your path have a little conversation and treat it with respect that's really critical um and you will learn what tree consciousness is and what snake consciousness is and bird consciousness or grass or water you'll learn all that they'll teach you um and then the uh what was the second part of that you asked um, bear. I'm just wondering, like, do, do animals people reincarnate as animals? N not directly. I mean, that is um, something that I see. Oh, get down, get 
it down. That I see in the literature a lot um, that the, the, this person was a this or that, whatever. Uh, what happens is when um, when we, when the tree, when the bear, when the bird, when the whatever, uh, disintegrates back to source energy. Now, all of that wisdom and all of that potential is in source. And so a little piece of that can come out and become part of a bear. And so the bear might be a little more aware, a little more human oriented than other bears. So that's what I've observed is, well, there is some truth to that whole thing about we could reincarnate as a bird or a bug or whatever, but it doesn't, it's not a one for one kind of thing. It doesn't appear that way at all. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we should, could, ought to be communicating with Mother Nature. Um, hang on a second here. Um, okay, who's next? Schwinn. Go ahead, Schwinn. We got a yeah. few more minutes here before we take yeah. our break. I seek guidance. Is, is there any way that, you know, to, to, sh to, to be able to remember details of dreams? Because a lot of times when we go into a dream state, it's, it's like within seconds when we wake up, it's like, it's just um, easy yeah. to work. Yeah. And then it's like, if you have to like meditate a bit, then you will slowly come back on some scenes. Right. Yeah. 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 That is the secret right there. Um, I tell people when you have a dream and you wake up, don't move until you have reviewed the entire dream. If you even so much as roll over, you are going to disturb the memory of that dream and you will lose a few details so just hold still review the whole thing and um and then get up and move around okay that'll make it much easier to remember details and then is it normal like like i used to sleep throughout the night but especially this couple of years it's like it will be like certain timing it will wake up yeah. it's like one dream, then you end, then you wake up for a while, then you sleep in, and then there will be another dream. Is it a normal process of awakening? Uh, there's a couple of things that happen. One is we get older, we don't sleep like we did when we were children. And there can be periods of time when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, okay, I need to go back to sleep. And nothing, and two hours later, you're still thinking, I need to go back to sleep. Um, my own way of handling that has been a couple of things. Number one, to make sure I have enough time set aside to sleep um, in case I wake up in the middle of the night and spend two hours doing something. When I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm up writing or I'm up reading or I'm up doing something and I work until I'm tired and then I go back to sleep again and finish the night. If you don't set up your life so that's okay to do that, then you're going to end up struggling. Um, second thing is you begin to have not enough B6 in your system. And the result is that you, you end up waking up over and over. You need a whole bunch of things. Um, God, what is the amino acid? I have to look up the amino acid. Make sure you get the amino acids because that makes good sleep and B6. Um, okay. and then, uh, the last thing I would say would be that, um, you know, if you wake up, uh, don't, don't, don't be harassing yourself. Don't be pounding on yourself. Just lay there. I often think to myself, oh, I have time to think and nobody's going to call on the phone. Nobody's going to disturb me. Nobody's going to interrupt. Um, I have paper and pencil beside my bed at all times. I have books. I have, you know, whatever my fancy might be right there. So um, use that time and don't worry about it. Okay? okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. It's hard to get older. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Alejandra, go ahead. I have three quick questions about body movement and energy. Okay. Uh, so I always seem to be rocking or moving or swaying and yeah. I don't even think about it until somebody tells me stop moving, you know? And so <laughs> I don't know if it's like habit 
or is actually energy moving? Yeah, yeah, you know, doing this. Yeah, or this, or yeah. this. And I'm or tapping always- your leg, people swing their leg back and forth, they cross their legs and then one foot's going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, those things actually restore motion in the body and keep parts of the body moving. It's not bad. Okay. And then the other if question you is- sit in a rocking chair, you have an excuse to rock. Yeah. So get a rocking chair and make use of it. Okay. <laughs> okay. The other question is, I notice sometimes when I'm in meditation, I'm not feeling very well. Uh-huh. My, I sit in the lotus position and then my back starts to, to go down, down, down until it rolls kind of into a ball. And okay. I feel like I'm locked in that position. I can't move. And a few minutes go by, sometimes longer than others. And then all of a sudden, I feel like I'm unlocked. And then I, my back starts to slowly go up. But it's an uncontrolled thing. Yeah. Okay. Let your body do what it does. Okay? okay. That's so important. There are certain motions that the body will do in order to do something that bodies do that we don't really know about. Um, and that becomes really very clear when you have the experience of Kundalini and, and now energy is running the body does strange things. Yes. So, okay. And then yeah. the other thing I noticed that I don't want to meditate with people anymore <laughs> because I have had many experiences now where somebody yeah. says, Oh, I want to meditate with you. And we sit together and all oh. of a sudden, I notice that my body moves, let's say, to the to the left side. And all of a sudden, I have all these visions of their life and emotional things. And then I go to the right and all the mental things. And then I yeah. s- switch back and forth. And it's like they're killing it. But I it's like I'm living it and crying like a crazy woman, you know, yeah. all, over their stuff. Yeah. Um, and then the body starts just moving without me being able to control it. And then it just stops, but they don't feel anything. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm the one going through everything. Yeah. Right. They're dumping. Okay. Who, I mean, who wants to meditate with somebody else that that's an oxymoron. Meditation is when you withdraw into yourself. You don't need anybody else there unless you're going to borrow energy from that individual and dump yours. So, okay. yeah, that's just like, oh, wow. Don't oh, do okay. Okay. Well, do, do what you want, but I, yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just, okay. it was a very strange sensation and I, I, I yeah. it wasn't pleasant and it's happened three times. Uh, so I, you know, it's close, the people close to me and they're just say, I want to sit there and watch how yeah. you do it and meditate with you or breathe with you. And I'm like, okay, you know, okay. but now it's always, it's almost like a scary feeling of being yeah. in room with someone else. And it is, that's where the whole concept of the spiritual uh, Dracula comes from, you know, sucking energy, not sucking blood, sucking energy. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Huh. Okay. Roger, go ahead. Well, this uh, entire discussion today has been incredibly powerful for me. Okay, uh, one, of the, one of the things that is becoming more clear to me is that since I'm apparently on an infinite cycle of learning, uh, I might as well, uh, and, and I think you've been emphasizing this uh, as well, I might as well, instead of trying to react to certain things, I might as well learn what I can based upon the challenges that I'm running into right? and, and, and move forward. And, and the more, the more I can learn uh, on this particular go around, the, the better it will be on the next one. But I'm also sensing something else is that, you know, in this infinite path we seem to be on going back yeah. and forth, wherever uh, that we set up challenges for ourselves so that yeah. we can, you know, we if, if you're sitting on uh, if you're sitting on the beach and not doing anything, um, right. you're not you're, you're, there's there's no real learning experience there. You know, the, so the the biggest uh, learning experience when I look back over my life, the biggest learning experience has been the most incredible challenges. Okay, that somehow or another I survived, uh, and I actually learned something from them, That's and I'm right. moving on. 
So uh, this, <clears throat> so it's it's like okay, I might as well learn to take my own power here the best I can. You got it. And move forward and don't ever give up. That's right. Life is this joy ride. We're not joyous. We don't. It's like, right. you guys, life is a gift. We're supposed to be enjoying this. And we don't enjoy it because we're too busy playing the role of victim. So take charge. Do it your right. way. Yeah that's, yeah, that's becoming more important to me. Yeah. Yeah, very good. So thank, thank you for the way you started it today, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. I was thinking um, this morning when I was getting ready, it's like, well, I think we'll start with some Q&A because that's always important. And then we'll go to dreams. Um, and, and I thought, well, I'll just announce that. But I didn't even have to announce it. People just, boom, started right in. I'm like, well, they got the message. So, so um, and the questions have been really good. So I hope you learn from all of that. Oh, I, I enjoyed all of the interaction that people were sharing. And it was okay. really fantastic. Yeah, I love the way people are. Everybody's so different. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. yeah.